When you go into a car parts store, there seems to be a massive array of different parts on offer. And the question is always, will these parts actually work? You look at the box and it's promising a 50 brake horsepower power increase, but does that actually pan out in real life? In this video, we're gonna look at the very best mods that you can do to your engine. We're gonna focus on naturally aspirated engines because that's what a lot of visitors to our site have. We've got other videos dealing with turbocharged vehicles and the best mods for those. But for now, we're just gonna focus on getting the most performance and power from a naturally aspirated engine. <laughs> So the key in tuning an engine is to get it to burn more fuel. And to do that, it needs more air. The air and fuel needs to be mixed in a very specific ratio in order to get a clean, efficient burn. Otherwise, it's just gonna be sooty and you're not gonna get the maximum amount of power. So with any aspect to car tuning, you're looking to increase its capacity for consuming the fuel and the air that's provided to the engine. So first up, we come to the common mods that everyone seems to be doing to their car, and that's the induction kits and the sports exhausts. So do these actually make much difference to your car? Well, in reality, they don't. They're predominantly just there to remove a restriction in the intake or the exhaust. So you want the air to flow into and out of the engine as efficiently as possible. So the idea behind those mods is to allow the car to breathe more easily. But in reality, the manufacturers have set the cars up to be quite efficient. There's very little improvement that you can get if you're just removing a non-existent restriction from either the intake or the exhaust. And a lot of people have had problems fitting induction kits with flat spots and other issues and error codes that the engine's been firing up. So we certainly wouldn't recommend those as first mod, but when you start dramatically increasing the power, it makes sense because you inevitably end up with a restriction in either the intake or the exhaust at some point when you've added quite a bit of power. So what mods do we actually recommend? Well, just moving away from the engine briefly, we would certainly recommend that you focus on brakes and suspension. They're probably two of the most significant changes you can make to any car that improve your enjoyment as a driver. So first off, we would certainly recommend you go away and look at those items. Even if you just replace the brake pads with decent quality pads that really bite, you'll dramatically reduce the stopping distance. And most manufacturers provide suspension that is fairly soft. So just uprating the suspension for something a little firmer, you don't need really hard suspension and you don't need a massive drop to get the maximum power from your car. So avoid wasting money on those extreme kits or the motorsport kits. You're, you're not gonna enjoy living with it on everyday roads and in everyday driving. Moving on now to engine mods. Now, remapping is one of the most significant changes you can make to the engine. So the computer in the car controls often the fueling and the timing. And by making adjustments to that, you can increase the engine's efficiency and get it to produce more power. The typical power gains that we see on naturally aspirated engines that have been remapped is around 10 to 15%. Not massive, but still significant. And considering most remaps only cost about three to 500, it's certainly worth investing to get that sort of power level. But bear in mind, we're talking about a percentage of power increase. So you might get a box that promises 50 brake horsepower. Now, when you examine those claims, it's often on a much larger engine, a higher capacity engine that they've achieved those power gains. So in reality, if you have a much smaller engine to start with, your 10% power gain will be much less than the 50 brake horsepower that is on the box. So always be careful when you compare different remapping companies, don't look at the headline figures. We cover this so often in our articles because so many people get caught out. You're not looking at just the peak power, it's the overall performance graph and where that power is being delivered that matters most. We've seen cars that have had very little power increase at the top end, but the car has been transformed as you've got a lot more low end power and it's much more suitable for overtaking and for everyday driving. So remaps are definitely one of those mods that we would recommend you do. After remaps, you start to get into the realms of quite expensive mods that require the engine to be taken apart. So one of the simplest you can do is probably fitting a lighter flywheel. So the gearbox and clutch assembly need to be removed to fit that. 
and a lighter flywheel will allow the engine to rev more freely. It'll make the car feel a lot more responsive. Again, don't go too light because that'll impact the car's efficiency on hills. It'll start to bog down and you start to have problems driving in everyday traffic. So avoid the extremes as with all of these mods. Just look at what you're using the car for and get mods that are suitable for your desired use of the car. If you're taking it out on the track, that's fine. But if you use your car every day and you need a little bit of comfort and reliability, you need to trim back a little bit on your expectations. And there's no point wasting money unnecessarily here. Within the head of the engine, you've got the air and the fuel mixture going into the cylinders through the valves. So getting larger valves is often a really good way of just increasing the engine's ability to breathe and a lot of manufacturers have cut corners in the manufacturing of the head so they don't flow as freely as they can. So with a little bit of investment and time, you take your engine to a specialist with a flow bench and they can optimize the airflow through the head, through the valves into the cylinders and remove any bottlenecks or restrictions, maybe even opening up the valves ports a little bit with a three angle or a five angle valve job that just allows the air to flow more freely and seats the valve much better. And in cars where I've had that done, I've noticed better fuel economy as well. Now, when it comes to actually timing the opening and the closing of the valves, the camshaft is the thing that does this for us. It's basically a big stick with egg-shaped lobes on it and those egg-shaped lobes directly open the valves and close the valves according to whatever durations you require. So changing the camshaft in most engines is probably the most significant power gain you can get, um, especially when talking about a naturally aspirated engine. It changes the nature of the engine and allows the engine to have longer to suck in more air and can improve the volumetric efficiency. But a camshaft needs to be matched with other mods, particularly the timing and the mapping to get the maximum benefit from it. So if we're talking about taking the engine apart, it makes sense to talk about the internal components within the engine the pistons, the crank and the conrods, they all do a lot of work in an engine. And if you're tuning an engine, you certainly want them to be as strong as possible. So upgrading to forged components that are stronger and harder can give you a bit more leeway and a bit more reliability in your tuning project. But you can also look to alter the compression ratio of the engine. If you, for example, made the cylinder bores larger and got pistons to match, you'll be altering the compression ratio and increasing the volume and the cylinder capacity of the engine. And there really is no replacement for displacement. The more cylinder capacity you've got, the more power you can produce. But be careful with increasing the compression ratio because that can lead to problems such as detonation and pre-ignition, which would be detrimental for your engine and your sanity. So most of the other mods that we'd recommend you do is just keeping everything working efficiently and effectively in the engine. So the cooling system certainly needs a bit of attention. You don't want your engine running too hot. So make sure the radiator is not rusted away and it's got um, good cores and it flows nicely and we've seen people switching to electric water pumps and the big advantage of those over the mechanical ones that the manufacturers fit is the speed can be adjusted electronically so when the car is warming up you can set the pump to work more slowly to allow the heat to stay in the engine a little bit longer and it just helps things warm up a bit more quickly and when you're doing high rpm driving and the engine is under load and is experiencing a lot of heat you can accelerate the water pump and get that water circling through the system into the radiator more quickly. And all of those things can have an effect on the efficiency of the engine, making sure that it's not overheating and you're not having other problems with it. The engine oil that you choose is also critical and often with a tuned car, you may need to change the grade of oil that you're using because that oil is doing a lot of work. And if it's overstressed, it will start to shear and it'll come away from the cylinder walls and it will just stop lubricating the cylinders and components within the engine. And you'll have all sorts of problems just because you've used the wrong grade of oil. So make sure that your oil grade is up to spec and that you're doing all right with that. Adding an oil cooler is another way of keeping the engine temperatures down. The oil doesn't work too well when it's overheated. So one way of keeping it within the tolerances and reducing the overall engine temperature is by fitting an oil cooler to the car. 
So we've briefly touched on intake and exhaust mods. So where typically is the restriction in the intake and the exhaust? Well, with the exhaust, it's usually in the catalytic converters, the DPF filters, those things that are designed to catch as much of the exhaust as possible and cause it to react or capture the soot particles to allow them to burn off. And it's those areas where you typically find a bottleneck. So is there an advantage to removing those well, theoretically, you do get better flow without those components, but in pretty much every region, it's illegal. You can't remove those pollution controls and keep your car road legal. In some countries, you can experience large fines. You can have your car confiscated and taken away from you. So is there an alternative? Well, yes, thankfully there are. There's better flowing sports alternatives. DPF filters or catalysts that have more cores, larger core areas, and they flow much better. When you compare one of these sports components with complete removal, you'll notice there's very little difference in what they do and restrictions. So it doesn't make sense to have an illegal car when you've got a performance option out there on the market. And with the intake, don't just look at the air filter and the air filter housing. Look at the intake headers that take the air charge into the engine because the design of those in some cars leaves a lot to be desired and there's a fairly substantial improvement can be had by changing the headers. The open cone filters I'm not a fan of, I'll be quite honest, they look nice, they make that nice induction roar and that is probably the only reason I would recommend fitting a cone filter to your car. But the big problem with those is they suck in the warm air from the engine bay and warm air carries less oxygen and less oxygen means you have to burn less fuel. So straight away there's a disadvantage. You can mitigate that to some degree by fitting a cold air box with a cold air feed just to isolate the air filter from the engine bay's warmer temperatures. So we really have just skipped over the subject of tuning cars very, very simply. If you want to know more, please visit our site. There's articles. I'm trying hard to cover every single make and model and engine. It's a big job. If you've got some tips and pointers to pass on, please do so. Please use the comments at the bottom of our articles. Please comment on this video and tell us what mods you've done to your car. If you think I'm talking rubbish, let me know. This is how we learn. We exchange ideas. We challenge what we believe to be true and what we've experienced in our lives. And we have to keep an open mind because the world of automotive tuning and technology is always evolving. There's always new mods and we're dealing with mods now that we never even imagined were possibilities a few years ago or many years ago. And when you start tuning a car and you're playing with the carburetor and setting the jets, the idea of having it all electronically governed with fuel injection just seemed completely alien and distant and not possible. And now it's something that we just take for granted. So please like this video. It helps us to get out there. When people like the video, they leave comments on it as well. That's, that's really good for us. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Don't forget to stay tuned. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.